Next case in our interesting case series will be pulmonary thromboembolism. We will be discussing the CT case with CT pulmonary angiogram protocol in detail. Moving on with our case, these are the axial CE CT sections taken in angiography protocol. We can see that left upper limb veins have the cannula and contrast is being given from there. And these are the streak artifacts from the contrast in left subclavian vein. And we are moving down, we can see the lung apices, branches from aortic arch and the trachea in the center. The carotid branches ends and now we can see the arch of iota. Here is the SVC and the trachea. As we move down, we can see the ascending iota, descending iota and the pulmonary vessel starts appearing. Now we can clearly see the pulmonary trunk that is main pulmonary artery with the right and left pulmonary arteries. Vessels are well filled with contrast but here we can see the irregular shaped filling defect in the right pulmonary artery also in the left pulmonary artery near the wall of the arteries. These are the non-enhancing filling defects and as we move down to follow the branches of the pulmonary arteries these branches are almost completely filled with that filling defect which is nothing but the thrombus here also we can see the incomplete filling of the pulmonary artery branches with the thrombi so now we come up and we see the upper lobe branches we are above the level of aortic arch and now we can see that right lung pulmonary branches appear to be smaller in caliber filled with thrombi and left branches appear to be near normal now we move down again to see the lower lobe pulmonary artery branches. As we move down, we can see the thrombus in right pulmonary artery very well. Also there is another thrombus here. These thrombi seem to be continuing to the lower lobe branches also on the left side. Now we can see the filling defect surrounded by contrast. This is nothing but the partially filling thrombus. In this vessel we can see contrast surrounding the partially filling thrombi. It's called as polo mint sign described for pulmonary thromboembolism on contrast in CT. As we go down we can see the four chambers of the heart. The wall of the left ventricle appears hypertrophied. And uh, then we follow the pulmonary vessels to the basis of the lung. Upper sections of abdomen is clear. Next we will see the coronal MIP images that is maximum intensity projection images. Moving from posterior to anterior we can see descending iota pulmonary artery branches filled with thrombi as we saw in axial images. and. Now these are very well visualized to be partial filling thrombus because the rest of the arteries are filled with contrast. And now we can see the thrombus extending from main pulmonary arteries to the sub branches. We can see the heart and we can see the streak artifacts from the contrast given by left upper limb veins yes let's see the anatomy of pulmonary artery it's basically very simple the main branch divides into right and left main pulmonary artery and there's a branch for each bronchopulmonary segment now this is the left and right main pulmonary artery left upper lobe branches are for anterior apico posterior and lingular segment and these are the lower lobe branches Similarly, the right main pulmonary artery has branches for upper lobe, anterior, posterior and apical segment, the middle lobe, medial and right or lateral segment and lower lobe, basal segments.
generally while acquiring the chess ct we have protocols like non contrast and contrast enhanced non contrast as routine low dose and ultra low dose contrast enhanced as a routine and angiography protocol angiography protocol has ct pulmonary angiography ct angiography for systemic arteries and a combined protocol this another technique called triple rule out ct it is done in acute chest pain and we'll discuss this in brief first let's discuss non contrast ct protocols which is also common for contrast enhanced sequences it's a volumetric acquisition done from thoracic inlet up to the level of upper abdomen including the adrenal glands scan is acquired cordo cranially because cordially there are more breathing artifacts and it can be avoided other machine parameters include kvp to be placed 100 to 140 and mas is 130 to 200 coming to basics of contrast and hand ct the routine protocol includes contrast with iodine concentration 300 to 350 mg per ml with a dose of 1 to 1.5 ml per kg of the patient contrast enhanced scan is taken 55 to 70 seconds after the contrast administration now the angiography protocol to look for pulmonary arteries scan is taken from apex till the diaphragm with 100 kvp and mas automated by the machine roi is placed in the pulmonary trunk or main pulmonary artery or it can be placed in right atrium scan is triggered after roi reaches 100 hu here we can see once the scan starts superior vena cava starts filling up with contrast and the pulmonary vessels starts showing the contrast here we can see now the contrast is entering the pulmonary arteries and superior vena cava has contrast now roi has to be placed in main pulmonary artery here we can see once the contrast reaches more than 100 hu the scan is triggered and the scan starts here now the contrast is 281 hu while acquiring angiography images we can see streak artifacts from the dense contrast to avoid which we can do cordocranial acquisition by the time we come cranially the saline push would have diluted the contrast or we can do something called triphasic contrast injection in this we have phase 1 in which 50 ml of undiluted contrast is given next the phase 2 in which 30 ml of contrast with 70 to 30 dilution that is 70% saline 30% contrast is given in phase 3 50 ml of pure saline is given moving on to angiography of systemic arteries that is aorta and its branches indications for looking at these vessels are hemoptysis where bronchial arteries are the main cause in cases of aortic dissection and aneurysm in cases of pulmonary sequestration where branches are derived from aorta it's mainly done in cases of hemoptysis and we have to cover from thoracic inlet till lower border of l2 to include renal arteries because renal artery can be giving non systemic bronchial arteries to the lung which could be a cause of hemoptysis also include subclavian arteries which can give non systemic bronchial arteries roi is placed in descending aorta and scan is triggered at 100 hu Combined protocol is a newer technique for hemoptysis where we visualize pulmonary and systemic arteries both because both can be the cause of hemoptysis. Bronchial arteries are the major cause but pulmonary artery can also be a 5% of the causes. We include from thoracic inlet to L2 vertebra ROI is placed in ascending aorta. In this we give contrast in a split bolus technique in which 3/4 of the contrast is given at 5 ml per second. and next 1/4 of the contrast is given at 3 ml per second and then saline chase is followed at 3 ml per second here both aorta and pulmonary artery are opacified coming to triple rule out ct done in acute chest pain it's done in cases of young patients who has a lesser risk of acute coronary syndrome hence we have to rule out other causes of acute chest pain and in cases of negative biomarkers where proponents are not been raised and in cases of normal ecg findings or non specific ecg findings we have to rule out all the causes of chest pain so what can be the cause the cause can be from aorta that is dissection which is an acute cause and next pulmonaries can be cause that is pulmonary embolism can be acute cause of chest pain and to rule out coronaries 
I will be doing a separate video on triple rule out CT which I'll explain in detail and thanks for watching like share and subscribe and follow our channel radiology doodles